Hi everyone, I'm Harriet and I'm filling in for Rich. My focus this week will be the sudden sell-off in oil markets, as well as the three big central bank meetings this week. I will of course also give a rundown of the week's economic calendar. GKFX Prime presents The Week Ahead. I've made sure to include a little factoid in Richard's absence, but don't worry, I'll make it quick. Did you know that the word petroleum literally translates as rock oil? It stems from the Greek word petra, which means rock, and oleum, which means oil. There you go. If your oil and Greek knowledge has improved after that, please click the like button. It really helps us spread the word about these videos. Moving on to the economic calendar. It's a slow start on Monday, so we look to Tuesday when it starts to get busy. There is August industrial production and retail sales data from China, both of which are set to drop on a year-over-year -year basis versus July. Then we have UK unemployment, Germany ZW data and US industrial production. Wednesday and Thursday are the big ones. We have US retail sales and the Fed meeting on Wednesday, then it's the Bank of Japan and Bank of England rate decisions on Thursday, and we round off the week with UK retail sales. So oil prices have slumped pretty quickly. After two months of barely moving outside a $3 range in Brent crude oil, we dropped from above $45 per barrel to under 40 inside a week. What changed? Well, after speaking to a number of seasoned traders, the first surprising answer was tech stocks. You'll notice it was on the days that Nasdaq got hit that oil dropped the most. That makes sense to the extent that both assets have seen a melt up in prices from the March lows and were due a pullback when the market sentiment soured. The other key factor here is oil demand. Traders have been waiting all summer for a pickup in energy demand that just never materialised. Remember, 50% of oil consumed in America comes from the transportation industry and people have just stopped travelling because of tight travel restrictions and a natural concern for their health because of the pandemic. Until people can be convinced travelling doesn't put them at serious risk, it's hard to see that changing. So what could help oil bounce back? The experts tell me it's all about stock markets and the dollar. Higher stocks and a weaker dollar show investor confidence, which is normally good for oil. Before I wind things up, I'd just like to touch on the central bank meetings this week. The Fed is always the big one, but Jay Powell already let the cat out of the bag at Jackson Hole with the news on average inflation targeting. What might actually be more interesting is how the Bank of Japan and Bank of England frame their own policy reviews around what the Fed has done. If all the big developed central banks announce the same kind of policy, then in theory, they cancel each other out with respect to currencies. However, one asset that could do well if we see central banks acting together, saying they will tolerate higher inflation, is the best known inflation hedge, and that's gold. Right, thanks everyone, and good luck trading. And make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next video.